Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Now, coming up in our innovation and tech segment brought to you by Caldwell Sones, we have returning contributor Paul Caldwell, chairman and CEO of Caldwell Sones. And today we are chatting with Adrian Ashley, who got her first Bitcoin in 2009, wrote HTML before the internet was born, and designed her first NFT way back in 2015 before it was even a thing. She was also named number one woman blockchain influencer in the world. She has now launched Foxies.art, a global nonprofit campaign to educate over 1 million women and children in blockchain development and entrepreneurship. Her next book, which is coming out right around the corner, is called Minting the Future, and it's all about NFTs and the metaverse. Now, as they get settled into the broadcast room, let's chat metaverse, NFTs, gaming, and the rise of a new economy. Now, NFTs are the focal point of the metaverse, and for good reason. They enable ownership in a digital world that mimics the real world. For instance, your identity in the metaverse can be represented by an avatar made in the form of an NFT. This allows you to have a unique tamper-proof identity in a virtual world. Speaking of virtual worlds, following the emergence of blockchain-powered games, the concept of play-to-earn games gained tons of popularity. Now, this model disrupts traditional gaming by giving players full ownership of in-game assets in the form of NFTs. Now, as a result, players can generate revenue through these items by selling them on secondary marketplaces. Now, this new paradigm of blockchain-based gaming is setting things right in an industry that has mostly always favored developers and gaming companies. Now, with blockchain gaming, the ecosystem becomes more equitable for all people, from developers of the game to the game players. Moreover, with blockchain enabling true ownership of in-game items, developers can empower players and incentivize sustainable game economy growth without losing control over game operations. But in order for all this to make sense, this requires an understanding of the different ways in which digital assets can be created and the ways they truly shape a parallel economy built on DeFi. And here to chat some more are my experts at hand. Welcome back, Paul. Thanks, Zen. You are on so often. We're going to change the name of the show to a moment of Paul. <laughs> a- Ashley, beauty and brains. I love it. So glad to have you on. Okay, we're going to start with you. Talk to me about how you are using NFTs to empower women and drive female engagement in crypto. Because I know that Foxy's dart, dot art is really one of your passion projects. How will this help educate over one million women and children, uh, women and girls, in blockchain development and entrepreneurship? So Web3 enables us to have a more global economy. So there's no barriers to entry and there are no geographic boundaries. So the great part about working in blockchain and and helping to upskill women who are already mobile developers and and web developers uh, is to also inspire the children uh, in STEM, to get the girls in STEM early and also make sure that we work on their confidence and their self-esteem so that they stay that same brilliant, fabulous five-year-old girl who could take on the world. And that's what we're doing through a Web3 portal. And just for those of you who don't know, uh, Web3 is a blockchain enabled and blockchain means we can give you a sovereign digital ID. So you are certain that it is you and you own your stuff. I love it. With the overall, um, you know, essentially while the overall technology sector has repeatedly come under fire for its lack of gender diversity, what you're bringing up is extremely critical because the blockchain industry is trying to break out of that mold. And it may be, you know, too early to claim that equitable gender distribution has come to blockchain. However, it's definitely worthwhile to take a stock at how far we've come because in 2018, a survey of about 100 blockchain startups showed that only about 15% of jobs were held by women. So thank you for doing what you do. You're welcome. And that was also mostly marketing and administrative. It was only 7% technological in the tech teams. So, and having CTOs as as females is even more rare. And it's even more rare in gaming. If you look And blockchain enabled gaming with this play to earn is really changing the world. You have people in third world countries able to jump on and play these games and earn a full-time income. Love, Uh, yes. And I love the segue. This is gonna be great because Paul is gonna jump right in right here. Finish what you're saying. 
Oh, I was going to say, you know, it, it just enables new economies. And it does also allow people like one of our 14 year olds from the Billionaire Zombies Club launched his project. And he's making, you know, he's made college money already. Amazing. And, yeah. So it's that those are the types of stories that we love to hear, because I'm going to flip this to Paul now. And we're going to talk about asset ownership and how that is truly the pathway out of poverty. We're in sync here, Adrian. You just literally had the next question at hand. So with 1.4 billion unbanked people, Paul, in the world who have no way to enter the traditional banking system, they can't get a loan, they can't get a credit card, they can't buy a car, they can't sell anything, right? This is taken for granted by most of us in the developed world. But cryptocurrencies and NFTs, to Adrian's point, change this paradigm. Now these 1.4 billion people immediately have an opportunity to have a wallet, participate in digital marketplaces, create art, music. This truly feels feels revolutionary, like we are changing the world. What do you say to this, Paul? I, I agree. It is it is changing the world. I mean, the world is ever changing anyway. It uh, It's like transactions. They're all good. It just depends on what side of the transaction you're on. And in, in, in this space, um, it really has to be uh, thought about in a way that, that people uh, pay attention to the things that matter most. You know, it's kind of what matters most and then first things first, because it's very easy to get caught up in hyperbole around technology. It's, it's it, metaverse comes off the tongue very easily. Right. But how do you how do you create real value? How does a person create real value? And um, Adrian mentioned um, the uh, W3, Web3 um, and blockchain and owning your stuff. And that's that's really kind of where it starts at, at the end of the day. But one thing I want to um, uh, talk about just for a second in relationship to this is, um, you know, we're, we're a private equity uh, firm and, and we're not in the startup business. We're not we're not into venture capital. We are later stage investors. Typically, um, we started investing in this space in 2016. And uh, I, I got to tell you, at that point, it was so embryonic. It felt like we were getting into venture. Right. But um, we, we didn't. And we, we took some mature technologies and advanced those in the space. And they're now uh, things like OGPay.com, uh, for example, which is a global payments platform. Um, we recently uh, funded a game developer that's been developing their games for almost 20 years, um, but now moving those into this, this metaverse environment um, and so forth. So we're looking at the convergence, that intersection, and and how it impacts unbanked. You can look at unbanked and underbanked people as mature people, 18, you know, and above. But I got to tell you, a lot of participants in this space are much younger than that, that are doing very well for themselves in this space. So it's not, they, they're definitely unbanked, but that's only because they're not old enough to get their own bank account yet without their parents' signature. But they certainly... Um, can develop and start to build assets in the metaverse through minting their own NFTs. Um, they don't even have to sell them. They don't have to engage in commerce at this point. They can just begin the asset development process. And then once they grow older, I have, I have a 16-year-old, a 13-year-old, and an 11-year-old. I got to tell you, they're all about this stuff. They hear me, I come home and I talk about it. They watch some of these shows sometimes, my daughter especially. So she's all into this now. And and um, it, it amazes me how fast they catch on and how natural it becomes to them very quickly. It's not alien script to them, it's natural to them. So I find that very interesting. So I think that has a lot to do with how it scales. When you have 1.4 billion unbanked people one of the biggest challenges we have, I was just in Turkey meeting with the company that we're acquiring to merge into OG Pay. And I got to tell you something, educating all of those people that are currently unbanked about how to use decentralized finance based technologies and infrastructure. That's not easy either. Right. You just right. don't take you don't take it into a community in South Africa in um, Soweto. You, and you say, have to transition it. Yeah, you have to transition it in. Well, we have we don't have that much time, and I definitely want to hear some more from from Adrian here. But what you're saying is essentially, Paul, the basic premise of Web three is that every product is simultaneously an investment opportunity, and and really that's where you're looking at it from. Now, um, Adrian, I, I definitely want to hear from you uh, regarding the social impact side. What is really exciting is the positive influence NFTs can have in 
this world because they can represent a cause or a goal that people worked hard for, a, a unique moment in time that made the world a better place, so to speak. And I know that you're about social activism. But the best part about these NFTs is they can inspire others to perform acts of altruism and that these goods are obtained through the currency of social impact. Talk to me about how this is revolutionizing things on the social impact side. You have about three minutes. Okay, so I well, I want to do actually address one of the things that Paul was saying about the transitioning. And, and when you're talking about bringing people into Web3 and bringing people into blockchain, um, it's a double edged sword because you have this amazing benefit and this potential to really do good. But you also have a danger in that they don't know. So this onboarding process, especially into NFTs, one of the things where I always recommend OG pay is it's the only uh, the only wallet that's actually insured. So, you know, you're you're not going to worry that if somebody steals your stuff or your stuff is not authentic because they guarantee the, the NFTs that they sell, um, you're not going to have to worry about that. So it's kind of like a hybrid between having a custodial and a non-custodial. Um, actually, on Foxy's, we give out a worksheet. Um, I lovingly call it how not to lose your eep uh, because... <laughs> Because people lose their, their stuff. Even I lost my own MetaMask keys for 48 hours, which inspired me to write this little mini book, handbook, and teach people how to not do that. Um, but that's the key piece, right? So for social impact, everybody knows how to pick up the phone, dial in, give them a credit card number, and make a donation. But not everybody knows how to open up a MetaMask or you know get onto an exchange, do the full KYC, upload some money, then have some crypto, then know what to do with it. There's a whole onboarding process that we're in the process of teaching people right now. And that's the key thing. And to the point of, you know, children aren't old enough to have bank accounts. That is very true. But you know what children are old enough to do? Install a Chrome plugin, open a MetaMask and boom, they have a sovereign wallet, their keys, their money. That's yeah. kind of the whole representation of blockchain, which is personal responsibility and self-reliance. Kind of like my handshake is a contract. My word is a bond. Uh, that mentality that we have lost in society is the cornerstone of blockchain. And that is what it's going to help bring back. Yes. Well said. Amen, sister. You said it. Well, uh, you know, at the end of the day, once we're, we're looking at um, when you're looking at this from a bird's eye view and you're looking at the pockets of the world that it could help change. Right. Like India has the most crypto owners in the world at about 100 million compared to about 27 million in the United States and 17 million in Russia. Right. And the sales of NFTs have surged nearly 11 billion dollars in the, just in the third quarter of last year. That's up more than eightfold from the previous quarter. So what you're seeing is is a very telling economy. It's headed in, in, in a certain direction for a reason. And when you have, you know, advocates like yourself, like Paul Caldwell, with uh, very proprietary and revolutionary platforms like OG Pay or the original Two Digital Corporation or NFT platforms like Foxy's.art, that's where you start to open your eyes and say, wait a minute, let me wake up because the worst thing you could do is not become part of this process and be left behind. Exactly. And that's why what we're doing with foxies.art, you know, I was originally going after the female founders, but they want the sophisticated lady boss kind of thing. And uh, what I realized is I minted my little pony. And so all of my buyers are daddies with daughters. And I was shocked about this. But then I realized the whole point of what we're doing is to inspire these women and these girls who are not yet successful female founders and, and entrepreneurs and to give them the tools and the access to the resources and the mentors that they want. So kind of like how CryptoKitties has a breeding engine and you breed new things, our breeding engine actually not only breeds new things, it also kicks off a scholarship for a woman or, or a girl. So as we go through the breeding and, and creating this massive collection, that's how we're educating the women and financing it. So for $250, which is the cost of a Foxy, you can literally start that basically an endowment to educate all of these women and bring in all of these, these resources. And all the mentors are volunteering. Everyone is volunteering. I love it. Because we need more women. We have a block we we have a shortage of blockchain engineers. You're right. We so do. Why so we have now come out of our 14 minute segment. We're out of time, but you definitely outdid yourself because it's the first segment where Paul Caldwell got less words in than the women on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> Thank That's you. That's so the much. plan, right? That's the plan. But you know, Paul is our our biggest fan, and I love how you support women. R coming off of Women's History Month during you know this second day in April, we're definitely excited that we have such supportive sponsors like Caldwell Soames. Both of you, thank you so much for joining us. It was such a pleasure talking. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Take care. Absolutely. Well, it is hopeful to know that the pioneers of blockchain 
developed this technology with the intention to democratize and uplift global citizens. It will be critical that the originators stay true to their beliefs, especially when money, power, and acquisition offers from big companies start coming in this way. And as we enter into this new era of futuristic technological advances, each one of us has the power to shape this new world and our society by the very choices that we make. We are at the very beginning of this evolution. Let's enter it in with awareness of the world we want to participate in, who we want to give power to, and how we want to shape the future of civilization. That was our innovation and tech segment. Make sure you check out Adrian Ashley's upcoming book, Minting the Future. Also check out her NFT collection at foxies.art and check her out all over the internet at Adrian, spelled A-D-R-Y-E-N-N. -N. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WR, the voice of New York. That was our innovation and tech segment brought to you by Caldwell Soames. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 